The Ken Campbell Roadshow presents An Evening with Sylvest. Have you heard about the big strong man who lived in the caravan? Have you heard about the Clay and Frazier fight? When Muhammad Ali caught a right, you can bring all the inch brazier elastic. The total stretch capacity of this piece of elastic is 18 feet and the recoil velocity is 45 miles per hour. The strength of this elastic, thank you sir, the strength of this elastic is surprising if not to say incredible. If this piece of elastic were tied between two vertical poles it could successfully catapult a 20 pound boulder over a 10 foot wall. Are you ready? Are you ready, Sylvester? Yes. Judith will now place one end of the brazier elastic in Mr. McCoy's mouth. <laughs> Just to recap, ladies and gentlemen, the recoil velocity of this piece of elastic. Where am I going to go with this? <laughs> recoil velocity is 45 miles per hour. <laughs> Unless Mr. McCoy's reactions are now absolutely calculated down to the last second, he could well lose an eye, a tooth, or a nose. In fact, the great Dalby once performed this feat for the entertainment of the troops in the desert in 1942. He was feeling slightly under the weather, his reactions were slightly miscalculated, and he did in fact have his nose whipped away and he lodged in Vera Lynn's piano. <laughs> <coughs> Mr. McCoy is now going to attempt to receive the full velocity of this piece of elastic right in the face. Are you ready, Sylvester? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to pulling it for McCoy than I am. <laughs> right to the corner over there, I think. Absolute silence for this stuff. alive and well and unbruised, a big hand please for Silver Scamacoy. Thank you. So why is false teeth? <laughs> My card. Sylvester, Sylvester Limited. Lost things found, unwanted things lost, bizarre things undertaken. Bizarre things undertaken? Yes, bizarre things undertaken. Is there a bizarre thing you'd like me to undertake? Well, yes, there is. Speak. Well, can I speak with complete confidence? Yes, please do. You see, I've had this dream. Yes. You know what I've dreamed about? No. I've dreamed about having a wild, wild, primitive beast of a man who's never known a woman before. A wild, wild, primitive beast of a man who's never known a woman before? Yes, but he must be wild and primitive. Yes, yes. But never known a woman before. I can get two wild. With a huge, hairy, hairy face. You could get me wild. Yes, ten pounds. Oh, yes. I don't get him now. But he must be wild. Yes, to be wild. I've never known a woman before. I've never known a woman before. What a huge, hairy head! The huge, hairiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> ah! I bring him in now. The wild man from Barnia. <laughs> Come on, Hamlet. <laughs> the wild man from Barnia. 
no. Don't get him excited, madam. Don't get him excited. Come to me! I think he's been drinking two drinks again. There he is, the wild man. Look how wild he is, madam. Really wild! Aren't you wild, you wild man from Borneo? There you go. Look at that chest movement. I think he's very sad, ladies and gentlemen. His father died from exhaustion, trying to throw rocks at the stork. Oh, he's You've heard of that song? Oh, what a beautiful moron. <laughs> the wild, yes, it's pretty bad. Anyway, the wild man yeah. from Borneo. Oh, there we are, man, the wild man from Borneo. He's never ill, he's never ill. The germs can't stand him. <laughs> Do you like that dimple? Yes. That's not dimple, that's with the inflated head. He's yours for ten pounds. There you are. The wild man from Borneo. There we are, Hamlet. Uh, there we are, Hamlet. Don't spend another one drink. From Borneo, then, are you? Well, actually, I'm from Wanambulu, Spook. From where? Wanambulu. I'm a cobber, Blue. You're an Australian? That's right, Sheila. Oh. <laughs> but you are a wild, primitive beast of a man. Yeah. And you've never known a woman before. No. Take me. I'm yours. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Spirits, when it's Percy time, that's what you do. Clear back the furniture. Percy time? Yeah, time to give the one eye trousers slight an error. What do you mean in your experience? You said you've never known a woman before. I haven't. But if they're anything like those kangaroos, that's the time. Clear back the furniture. <laughs> <laughs>
you, uh, would you like to help me with my crossword? Hot in here, isn't it? I think I'll take my Mac off in a moment. I might undo the uh, bottom button now. Do you mind? Look, this is a very interesting magazine. Wow, is it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, do you mind? Oh, yeah, I'm in your life. <laughs> Comfortable, are you? away then? Certainly not. Gan, yeah, give us a bang. No. Yeah. No. I'll give you two pounds. I don't care. Two pounds ten? No. Three pounds? No. Five pounds? No. Seven pounds? No. Ten pounds? No. Twelve pounds? No. Please, please. This man has just offered me twelve pounds to bang me. You've just offered her twelve pounds to bang her? Yes. You've all got to do a bit to try to fight these inflationary price rises, huh? Five, five bob and think yourself lucky. Oh. Hey! Oh. Hey! Oh. Hey! Put that woman down! Go yes. on, put her down! Put that woman down! I know you. I know you. Aren't you Sylvester McCoy? Yes. Oh, weren't you in Bournemouth last summer? Bournemouth last summer. Yeah. Um, just one second. I'll get my five-year diary. Your five-year diary? Yes, I've got a very bad memory. Bournemouth last summer. Yes. Yes. Um, Yes, I was here for one week. I see. Did you travel by coach? Travel by coach. Uh, travel. Travel, 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 travel. Yes, I travelled down by coach from Victoria. And did you spend the night of August the 11th dining in the Starlight Room? August the 11th. Mm. Uh, August the 10th, August the 11th. Yes. Did you dine alone? <laughs> No. Did you dine with Mrs. Richards? <laughs> yes. And uh, did you take her back to the Belvedere Hotel? <laughs> yes. Did you have it away? <laughs> Sex. Mm. Yes! Well, I'm Mr. Richards and I don't like it! <laughs> Neither did I. Have <laughs> 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 you heard about the big strong man who lived in the Fight. When, when the harmony's all in court are right, boom, oh. you can bring all the heavyweights you've got. Cause we've got a little man to beat a lot. So give the little guy a big hello. Cause he wants to fight Jackie Powell. That's my brother. Still West, once he's got his start to go, a faulty man goes on his chest, big chest. chest. Yeah. It's blowing all the Arctic in his vest. He knows no rest. Bigger the arm, stronger the punch. Hellfire! Hell Don't push, just shove. Plenty of room for me and me. He's got an arm as big as a leg, a lady's leg, and a punch that would sink a battleship. Big ship. It takes all the army and the navy to shut the wind up. Silvest, 
Well, Silver McCoy, how do you feel about your forthcoming fight with Jackie, Mr. TB Palo? I'm confident. You think you're going to win? Yes, I think I'm going to win. Good, good, good. I understand that Jackie, Mr. TB Palo, has now perfected his revolution in new sheepshank hold and intends showing it tonight. Yes. Does this not frighten you? Uh, no, not particularly, but I look forward to seeing it, of course. So yeah. shall we all. <laughs> yes, but I'll see it from a different angle from you. Oh. <laughs> ah, my brother! about to enter the five round catchweight contest with Sylvester McCoy. Jackie Palo, the slightly larger of the two men, both wearing dirty trunks. Jackie told me in the dressing room earlier on that he has indeed now perfected his new revolutionary sheep shank hold. A fantastic new hold which ties the opponent up in a revolutionary new sheep shank knot from which it's impossible to escape. Jackie, I hope we're going to see a new hold actually this evening on Sylvester. Yeah. Marvellous for all the enforcement, everybody's on Silver's side, we know, and everybody looking forward to seeing him escape from the new ship shank hole. Marvellous style from Sylvester, very fit, both men very fit, and referee Blake moves in to give the two men their final Hello, step. the court, I want a job done, fight, keep it clean, lads, right. And there goes the bell for round one, Three seconds of Nice quiet start. This evening, ladies and gentlemen, nice easy tactics for both men looking very fit. Perfect style from Sylvester. Perfect movement, a handshake, a handshake into an Irish whip. I thought that was a friendly handshake, but it was Jackie's notorious Irish whip coming in there. Now he's gone in for a full, uh, full mess with the high press and the other pressure. High going down, Sylvester still smashing down the camera. Now he's down twice in the first round. What an exciting first half minute to have with that here. And the nutcracker, and nutcracker, it's just nutcracker to the head. Brought Sylvester down for the third time. Now Jackie's no. here, working on the leg, now working on the leg, trying to make the submission. I don't think he's going to get in the air, but he's keeping it close high. I see Sylvester straining for the rope, but he's not going to make it. Now Jackie's coming in for a pile driver. It's a pile driver into the canvas. Oh, horror of all sight. The old ladies are going mad. His head's running, pounding into the canvas. I think that was her. I'm sorry, but there I am. Sylvester's down for the fourth time in the first round. An absolutely terrible sight. Up again. It's down again. Oh, and Jackie's in on the other leg. Working on the muscle, no. trying for a submission, but I don't think Sylvester's going to give in on the first round. That would be a terrible thing. And no. Now, what, what's, it, what's this? What's it? Oh, my God. My God, it's fantastic. It's incredible. It's a perfect sheep shank knot. He's tied Sylvester up in a perfect no. sheep shank knot. The referee's counting. Three. A blood curling scream, Sylvester up, Jackie's out of the ring. Jump, Sylvester jumps out of the ring, out of the jumped on Palo's head. He's jumping on Palo's head outside the ring. The referee's still counting. And he's out! The winner by a knockout outside the ring. Yes, McCoy knocked out Jackie, Mr. TV, Palo is fed. Thank you, yeah. In the first round. Fantastic win, the old list coming in to carry Jackie out. Totally unconscious now. They're carrying him out, taking him as He's dead! The winner by a kill in the first round, Sylvester McCoy killed Jackie Mr. TV Palo in the first round, escaped from that fantastic sheep shank hold. Looks absolutely fantastic, Sylvester. Tell us, how did you do it? Well, Jackie Palo had me all tied up in a sheep shank hold. Oh, didn't he? yes, that's right. He had you all tied up in a sheep shank hold, yes. Yes, oh. I was lying there underneath the mine there thinking, well, that's it, I can't get out of this. And then, yes, just two inches above my head, I saw this dirty great pair of knackers. <laughs> you saw it. A dirty great pair of knackers two inches above your head. Yeah, so I bit into them. I took a dirty great bite into them. And back to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you bite into your own knackers, it doesn't have to give you an extra surge of energy. That's my brother, Sylvester. He's got, he's got a row of 40 medals on his chest. Big chest. He's floored all the Arctic in his breast. He holds the rest. Bigger the arm, stronger the punch. Hellfire! Son of a gun. Don't push, just shove. Plenty of room for the and me. He's 
Remember them pills they give us in a Boer War to stop us thinking about women? Yeah. Yeah, I think mine are beginning to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how many times do you do it a week? Three times. Three times, same Three as time. me. Try weekly. <laughs> try weekly, yes, yes. How do you spell try? Uh, how do you spell weekly, eh? <laughs> Hey, you know, I've been having a lot of trouble with my bowel movements. You've been having a lot of trouble with your bowel movements? Awful trouble with my bowel movements. Every morning at half past seven, I have a bowel movement. What's wrong with that? I don't get up till half past eight. Ah! Yes, well, cheer up. It'll be nice out soon. <laughs> I think it might be quite nice out now. What, get it out now? Yeah, go on, it'd be nice. No! Yeah, go on, give us a flash. No. Yeah. No. Go on, give us a flash. No. Yeah. No. Do you want a flash? No. They yeah, want a flash. No. Yes. You want a flash? Yeah, of course I do. Ha ha. But I like them never, right? Eh? <laughs> Where were you born? Uh, in bed. My mother was here at the time. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Tell me all about your childhood. Well, when I was two, I used to shave. That's ridiculous. How can you shave when you're two years old? I'd stand on the sink. <laughs> My pins... Thank you, man. My pins always wanted me to get ahead. Didn't they like the one you got? So eventually I ended up with 5,000 people underneath me. 5,000 people underneath yeah, you? Yeah, 5,000 people underneath me. I know, you were a tycoon. No, I was a caretaker in a graveyard. <laughs> then... <laughs> then I used to... I joined a circus. Yes, I joined a circus. I used to dive 30 feet from a platform onto a wet sponge. One night it broke my neck. Why? Some fool wrung the sponge out. Oh, <laughs> that's terrible. What happened then? Then I eventually ended up as an escapologist. An escapologist? Hey, I can imagine you in that old handcuff and bound in a straitjacket. I could get out of that. Uh, put in a big sack and buried six feet in the ground. I could get out of that. Uh, put in a big steel safe and thrown into the ocean. I could get out of that. Then I get married. Why? I couldn't get out of that. Uh, get out of that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. McCoy is now going to perform. Probably his most celebrated feat. He 
famous Berlin mailman escape. Mr. McCoy, standing chained, bound by handcuffs, and sealed inside this mailbag by a patent padlocks and a half inch stainless steel diameter bar. He is most anxious that nobody here should suppose that this is in any way a trick or that any of this equipment is faulty in any way. He will therefore pass amongst you all the equipment that is going to be used in the stunt. He also wishes a member of the audience to come forward and give him a personal search for any keys. <laughs> Bent pins, old bits of wire, nails, files, or any other implement for breaking out. <laughs> so, is there any young lady who would like to come forward and give Mr. McCoy the once or twice over? Any young lady? Anyone you fancy? <laughs> Uh, the lady over there looks like she'd like to come up. She'd like to come up and, uh... Oh, you must. Thank you very much. <laughs> Rose. Rose. Uh, Rose, is your, this is McCoy. Uh, do do? It's all yours. Or something. I want you to search him... <laughs> I want you to search him very carefully, Rose, for any... Keys, bent pins, old bits of wire, nails, files. I'm not fleet, huh? <laughs> Don't be careful, that's what happens. Carry on, where are we? It'd be too uncomfortable, wouldn't it? What would, what would be uncomfortable? Yeah, yeah, we could what? well have something no, secreted I'm thinking about. out in some way. I declare you. Free of bent pins and bits of wire. Ah, thank you very yes, much. Free, free thank, you, thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so he's free of bent pins and bits of wire. We'll now pass amongst you this chain. Could you give out that chain, please? Stop fiddling with it. Yeah, stop fiddling with it, dear. Give it out. That's it. Have a look. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes. I want you to examine that chain very carefully for any weak links and see if you can break it, okay? While you're doing that, I'm going to handcuff Mr. McCoy with these handcuffs recently purchased in Birmingham from Hyatt's and Company. Seem to have got them caught on a lock here. Uh, <laughs> Don't need to look into that. No, we'll, we'll wiggle it out. There it goes. <laughs> we purchased these from uh, Hyatt's and Company. Can I have your wrists? Thank you. From Hyatt's and Company in Birmingham, and they're the exact same model as was recently used in the Wheelie Pop Festival. <laughs> uh, just show them to that gentleman over there. Oh, he liked it anyway. So, yeah. Would you like to look at those handcuffs, sir? Make sure they're genuine handcuffs and that they are well secured. Thank you. Oh, you're having a good time with this chain, yes, there, yeah. Yes, right. While you're doing that, I wonder if somebody over here, would you like to look at that chain for me, please? Look at that chain. And you try and unlock that lock. Now that small chain, we have a small piece of chain which is going to be bound around Mr McCoy's ankles and then locked with a small lock there that this gentleman is trying to unlock at the moment. Can you unlock that lock? You're trying, but you can't. How about that piece of chain? So you satisfied with that piece of chain? Thank you very much. Well, if you wait much longer, it will corrode. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you putting it? <laughs> right, uh, if you just sit down in that chair. Uh, we're now bound, bind around Mr. McCoy's ankles with this chain. If we in fact do it in a certain way, we should be able to put the lock through three links instead of just two. That's cutting off the blood supply to his feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just chews them off. <laughs> like a rabbit. There we go, that's now going through that link. Is that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you put your leg there. Right. Shrunk, has it? <laughs> oh, you've been eating too much. Yeah. Yeah. 
that one. Now let's do another. Finally. Right, that's locked. Now we're going to bind Mr. McCoy with this chain. Around the ankles, around the wrists, and behind the neck. Right, around the ankles, on top of the chain that's already around his ankles, now bind another. Then pass the chain around his wrists, behind the handcuffs, making sure that he can't slip it off. Again. Really tight here. Now pass it behind the handcuffs. We'll try and secure Mr. McCoy in such a position as he is virtually incapable of movement. Bring it up through the middle. Really tight. Now push his head right down. Right down. Right down. <laughs> And around the neck, twice around the neck, <laughs> making sure of only one thing, and that's not to absolutely properly. <laughs> now, we'll secure that chain by means of this lock. I wonder if you look at that lock, sir, and would you come up and put it on for us, please? Would you put it through this chain here and through this chain which is connected to the neck? Choose any link you like, in fact, but make sure he's nicely in a very uncomfortable position. <laughs> Choose any lock, any link you like. One more, they're saying. <laughs> A small groan emitted. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much. I wonder if you'd do one more thing for us, would you? I wonder if you'd stand behind us and uh, watch very carefully while Marcel and I now place Mr. McCoy inside this mailbag. We'll just shake this mailbag about. Thank you, Judy. Pass it inside out. Shake it about again. Anything rattling is my medals. Shake it about again. Now we'll lift him into the sack, and we have to do this very carefully, otherwise we'll break his neck. <laughs> Which wouldn't be a bad thing at all. Right? So you watch us very carefully now, sir, and watch we don't slip him anything. Right, slipping his feet down to the bottom of the bag. Yeah. Lift up his behind. This is the most unpleasant task of the evening. And <laughs> lower it carefully onto the floor. That's it. Now, we're going to secure the neck of the sack with this bar. I wonder if you'd like to look at that bar, sir. Look at that bar, sir. And would you look at that lock? Would you look at that lock, sir? Just uh, convince yourselves that they are real, genuine locks. Now, you sit that bar, sir, through the four metal links in the neck of the bag, and then we'll secure it by means of these two locks, so that it can't, in fact, be slipped off. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, inside the bag, if you put that on, inside the bag, Mr. McCoy is handcuffed, bound around the ankles by a small chain, and again by a larger chain around the ankles, around the wrists, and around the neck. Fine. Are you sure, sure those locks are locked? Make sure it's all secure. Fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Fine. Now, in less than 30 seconds, Mr. McCoy is going to emerge unscathed from this sack. Are you going to watch the clock for us, please, Judith? Yes. Fine. And go. <laughs> there are, in fact, only 30 people now living in England capable of performing this stunt. Mr. McCoy is one of them. 15 seconds. Ow. 15 seconds. <laughs> McCoy has failed to come out in his record time of 30 seconds. 45 seconds. Obviously something is not quite as it should be, perhaps. The chain around the ankles seems to have swollen. Hey, stop that, you go deaf. <laughs> One minute, you may hear. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
Marcel, is it alright? The scissors. <laughs> no, it's alright, there he is! He's out tonight as well! So much of a pie, as you see! Thank you! The time is still intact! Mark, the handcuffs and the bar still here together, and the small chain that was around the ankle still complete. There he is, and not a scratch on him. Silver Star McCoy, ladies and gentlemen. There will now be a short intermission. Uh, we have heard that an awful, an awfully large number of people have come along this evening, especially to see the human bomb. And the human bomb. <laughs> Many requests for the human bomb wherever we go in the but unfortunately we're most, most often unable to do it because it is a fairground open air stunt. However, we're very fortunate this evening that Mr. McCoy has agreed to perform the human bomb outside on the beach. <laughs> uh, so if you would like to gather uh, just on the beach there or overlooking the wall opposite the, uh, this cafe, you uh, could see the human bomb being performed. However, I must warn anybody with a heart condition or who suffers from any nervous diseases that they are best advised to stay in here and wait for the beginning of the regular second half. Uh, but those people who would like to see the human bomb, please, in about one minute's time, it will be performed, perhaps, perhaps, with full volcanic effect, <laughs> outside on the beach. Thank you very mistake in saying that this is the second half in so much as there will be a third half. Oh, <laughs> but for the moment, happy Christmas to you too. Thank you. For the moment, uh, I'd like to make a formal announcement. Um, it's with very much pleasure I announce that Sylvester McCoy got himself married last Saturday. So is he there? Sylvester? Yes. Sylvester, do you want to come up? <laughs> he got himself married last Saturday, ladies and gentlemen, and his wife is here tonight. His blushing bride of only six nights. Uh, where is she? Sadie. Judith! 
Our very own Judy. Congratulations to your rest of Judy. I must say that uh, Married Life with Judith is one of the best stunts I've ever performed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it was a very quiet wedding. It's nice uh, to you. It's not now, but it was a very quiet wedding. Uh, only a few friends and Judith's parents, but it was quite a bizarre affair. And with their permission, we are now going to reenact the most sensational part of the ceremony. <laughs> I do, yes. Could I have the nail, please? <laughs> oh. Oh, this is um, a straightforward um, three-inch nail. Wire nail. Would you like to examine it? Wire <laughs> Not fresh. It doesn't yet. bend. It's uh, yeah, tightly easy. Perfectly <laughs> straightforward. With this nail, I thee wed. The hammer, Vicar. Pregnant, Mrs. Richards. <laughs> but I... I don't know how that could be, do you, Gavin? No! Uh, you are using um, a form of uh, contraception, then, are you? Yes! Always! Are you using the uh, rhythm method? What? The rhythm method. Do it while we're dancing, you mean? No. <laughs> no. What form of contraception are you actually using? The biscuit tin! The biscuit tin? The biscuit tin, yes. What's the biscuit tin? Well, you see, Gavin and I like doing it standing up. Yeah. And what with Gavin here being so small... I stand on a biscuit tin. <laughs> and when I see him going red in the face, I kick it away! <laughs> ICI, you know. <laughs> I'll soon analyze this. Yes, yes. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. 
Yeah. Yes, I should say it was one of the um, more recent forms of plastic. Where'd you get it? I don't know. I just went like that. And there it was. Oh, no! thing to do. <laughs> no one about. <laughs> Good evening, sir. All right, evening, officer. It's a nice night. <laughs> Yes, it is rather a pleasant evening, isn't it, sir? Yes. May I inquire, sir, what you've got in that bell rat there, sir? Um, it, it, yes, it's a, it's a butterfly, officer. Yeah. A butterfly. <laughs> yes, and a rare what? specimen of butterfly. <laughs> a rare specimen of butterfly, yes. yes, sir. And what type of a rare specimen of a butterfly might that be, sir? Hmm? Um, it's, a, it's a brown admiral, officer. <laughs> brown admiral. Yes. Brown Admiral, yes. Mm. Yes, you might say it's um, actually related to a, a rear Admiral. Still, <laughs> um, yeah. thank you, yes. I'll pay you later. Um, but you see, the thing is, it's worth a hundred pounds, you see. And uh, you see, the thing is, I've left my, my net at home. There's always some way of getting my net, I capture it. You say it's worth a hundred pounds, sir? Yes. <laughs> Don't you worry, sir. Don't you worry, I'll stay here and look after your rare oh, specimens. Oh, really, sir, that's very good. Don't yeah. you worry, sir. <laughs> we're, we're split the proceeds 50 50. Wonderful, yes, I'll get my net. Yes, I'll sure get your net. 50 50. Stein up! Evening, sir. Evening. What on earth are you doing down there, man? It's uh, uh, a rare butterfly in this bird of it's a, it's a brown admiral, sir. It's worth, worth £100, sir. I'm looking after it for this collector chap while he's nipping over to get his net, sir. I see. We're going to share the proceeds 50 50, sir. Uh, a brown admiral, you say? Yes, sir. Worth £100, you say? Yes, sir. And you and this chap are going to share the proceeds 50 50. Yes, sir. I see. Look here, Stein, I'll bugger him. We'll have it. When I say go, you lift the hat and I'll make a grab for it. <laughs> Can you hear anything, sir? It's definitely humming. <laughs> you ready, sir?
Alistair McCoy has led such a wicked life. He is now going to be hanged by the neck until he is dead. Executioners, come forward and prepare for summary execution. <laughs> Tie the noose! Since the net is in the way of the beam, we will hang him by the French method. Who <laughs> what? The French method. What's the French method? The French method is more a method of slow strangulation than of hanging. A simple knot is tied in the rope. The knot is then placed about your head and the two executioners will pull and pull until your neck snaps and your head flies off into the air. <laughs> ah, executioners, I want you to wait for the word of command. On the word of command, I want you to take up the slack on either end of the rope and begin to apply the full weight of your bodies, leaning back and pulling simultaneously. Right, all right. It's quite difficult on this small area. I want you to manage if you can. Lean back now, taking up the slack. Lean ben, back. Can ben, he? Ben, Come ben. along, give him a bit of encouragement. He. Ben, he. here this evening who fancy that there's one over there, one immensely strong gentleman over there, there's another, two immensely strong gentlemen to come forward here and fit their strength against the Nick. Nick. Nick, you're going to get on that end, are you right? Now let's wait till we get someone else. Is there someone else? There's someone here. Gentlemen there, would like to come forward. Thank you very much. A big hand, please, for our two balls. From the audience. Get on this end, please. Now, I want you to do exactly as I say. I want you to take up the slack on either end of the rope now. Make yourselves comfortable. Do you want to get off the side as well? That's all right. One foot on and one foot off either side. I want you to begin to apply the full weight of your bodies, leaning backwards. Go on, lean backwards. That's it. No, 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 no. no. What are you doing? Twisting. Twisting. You're not putting a corkscrew into his head, you know. He's supposed to be pulling. Heave. That's it. Heave. Heave. Heave, that's it, heave, that's it, heave, heave, that's the way, sir, you're doing a good job there, heave, heave, that's the style over there, Chris, heave, come along, I want to see his head pop off and hit the ceiling, I want to see him coming up through the other neck, heave, heave, what can I say, you're hopeless, you're hopeless, useless, it was a wonderful try, thank you very much, thank you very much, a marvellous try, thank you, a big hand for Chris, Thank you very much, Will. They did a good job, but he's the man who can't be hung. The bugger's immortal. A big hand, please, for Sylvester McCoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Big ten ton lorry. I'm quite added to the size to drive that lorry, thank you very much. <laughs> He's being funny with me. Oh, leave him alone, He's being funny with me. Well. Bangers and beans. Uh, what did you come down here for, eh? Maybe a sausage, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some bread and butter, yeah? <laughs> it is nobody, it's just beneath my contempt. <laughs> just a minute, Jack. Can you excuse me, Mr. Just a minute. Uh, you don't mind, Governor, do you? Thanks. One egg. Oh. <laughs> 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 hey, let's have a go then. <laughs> <laughs> Notice me yet? Not much of a man, that, eh? What? Not much of a man, that. Uh, no, not much of a man. Nah. Yeah, nah. Uh, he's not much of a bleeding driver either, is he? He's just backed his lorry over free motorbike. Oh. 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 Uh, we now have another... <laughs> we now have a, another short... I promise you that we won't drag you out again after this. <laughs> Relax and... and no, I've got to clear up the uh, mess down there. <laughs> excuses, excuses. Why don't you go? Yeah.
Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to um, refer to the Guinness Book of Records, which I have here. It's an item on a page, 140 pages. I think I've lost it. Right? it is. A Monsieur Auguste Muffray of France consumed 24 pints of beer in 52 minutes. Now, this is the only reference to beer drinking in this book. And the person who actually is mentioned is a bloody frog. <laughs> Now, during our tour of generally public houses, I know we're not in one tonight, but it looks like one, doesn't it? We um, hold beer drinking competitions. And we've actually approached uh, Guinnesses about this, and they have agreed. Try and establish a world record for drinking one pint of beer. Now we've been doing this for some time, and so far we've actually established a record of 3.5 seconds. Now, would you like to come forward, sir, and have a batch of three pieces? What's his name? Chris. Right, thank you, Chris. Chris is actually going to come forward. <laughs> New world record. Now, we've got half a dozen pints here. Anybody else want to have a go? Anybody reckon that they're really a dab hand at beer drinking? <laughs> carry you home. On. Is that your only problem? <laughs> right, come up here and I'll carry you home. <laughs> well, you have to find a pretty strong woman to carry you home. <laughs> Anybody else want to have a go? Drinking a pint of it. Any gentleman? Or any lady? Anybody? No. 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 to tell you that the actual man that has 
made the best time so far of 3.5 seconds is one of our own company. <laughs> A big hand, please, for Johnny Scott, Yay! our champion. Right, you can put that one down and take a new one. Uh, oh, oh. Right. Oh, nice. Now, gentlemen. Gentlemen, please. <laughs> yeah. uh, your attention, please. Could you stand <laughs> along the left of the stage? Uh, <laughs> can you see, Julie? Julie, yeah. incidentally, here is our official oh, time. Hello. hello! Our official time, people. Now, gentlemen, please, I want you, after you've finished your three, <laughs> to put the glass on your head, and then the clock will stop. The first man to put the glass on his head. Now, I'll hand you over to Judith, who will explain the rules. Uh, um, what I'm going to do is count to four, and then I'm going to say go. I usually have a gun at this point, but it's not loaded. So, so I'm going to say, I'm going to count to four, and then I'm going to shout go. Yeah, and you start drinking. Start. Somebody's disqualified. Yeah. You do need to be in here. So you're out. You're out, mate. Out. 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 On the fifth count, Judith will give you a bang. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gentlemen, the oh, glass oh, on top oh. of your head, upside down. Upside right. down. Top of it. <laughs> One, two, three, four, go! Seconds is the world record for having a ferret down. Now, this record is held by the great Dick Dorby. <laughs> he made the record while he entertained the troops in the desert in 1932. And we are going to make an attempt on that world record here tonight. We have with us Mr. Charlie Black from Guinnesses. Are you here, Charlie? Yes, just come to the door. And should we break the record here tonight, I'm hoping Charlie Black will in fact ratify it. Yes, I will. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to the ferret. Now, for all the beasts of its size and weight, the ferret is undoubtedly... <laughs> the ferret is undoubtedly the most vicious and ferocious. It um, counters all danger with a biting and snapping of its front teeth, which are needle sharp. <laughs> the uh, ferret has been observed to chase a bull and attack it. Now then, there's only one way to handle a ferret. If you'd like to get one out, please, Gavin. Oh. 
The only one way to handle a ferret. Yes, I know it might look like a baby panda, but it's really vicious. This is the only way to handle it. This is the only position in which the handler is safe from those deadly front teeth. The body is completely mobile, <laughs> allowing it to enter the smallest tunnels. The head is roughly the same shape as the sharks, and they are, with their mobile, almost swimming bodies, one might say, the sharks of the earth. Now, there are some people that claim to have tamed the odd ferret. If you do manage to tame one, you'll soon learn not to let it go on your shoulder. For if it sees anything dangling, it will bite it. <laughs> now, it will see your ear and it will say, Oh, look, my friends, lift a piece of meat out for me and take a whacking great chunk out of the ear. <laughs> now, as I said, until tonight, the great Dick Dawbley's record of 50 seconds with a ferret down your trousers has remained unchallenged. <laughs> Until tonight. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have a challenger in our midst. A man who's both dopey and daring enough to give it a try. <laughs> You've guessed it. Sylvester McCoy. <laughs> Enormous challenge of the great Dick Dawbley's record of 50 seconds with a ferret down your trousers here at Insto tonight. Yes, I am, yes. yes. Well, Nothing as good to you and Yes, that's right. One up yours as well, sir. <laughs> right. Um, now, we'll now continue with this stunt in the manner as prescribed by the great Dick himself. It says here, first, the man's trousers must be dropped. And the underwear, the underwear must be searched for any signs of uh, oh, tin or other forms of protection. Now, could we have a young lady, please, to <laughs> step forward and inspect Sylvester? You keep, you keep refusing me, Ducky. Not like that, dear, not like that. No. Any lady. You know, if I want to poo, I'll ask. <laughs> well, what about the young lady we had before? She's an expert, she should know her way around. Is she here? Well done, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Rose, Rose, come on. Thank you. Right, Rose. May I call you Rose? No. You call, I can call you Rose. You call me Mr. Steiner. All right. <laughs> How do you do? Now, don't look at me like that. Um, would you like to inspect Selvest's underwear for any signs of tin or other forms of stiffening? <laughs> other forms of stiffening. All right. <laughs> you hold up your vest. <laughs> huh? You hold up your vest. You hold up your vest. Oh. All right. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Search me. Oh, hey! Did you search him? Hey, come here. Go and search. It's very essential. I mean, is there anything? You know, ah! It's all right. It's all right. You're happy. It's all right. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I am. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Rose. <laughs> Incidentally, she said there was nothing there. <laughs> Now, at this point, at this point, Judith and I will tie with raffia uh, above Sylvester's knees. This, is, of course, is to stop the uh, ferret from going down the trouser leg and out the trouser bottom. Is that all right? Yeah, that, uh, well, a little bit tighter, because because out here with all these ladies around in the bed. <laughs> right. 
Wonderful. Now, more than anything, this is a yogic stunt. So Vesp will have to concentrate in such a way and use such powers of mind over matter as to persuade the ferret that there is no meat about. <laughs> and I do assure you that the um, ferret will find its way right inside Solveth's underwear. Um, are you ready, Solveth? Yes. I will now hand you over to um, Johnny McCartney, wherever he is. You here, John? Yes, sir. Who would like to say a few words on Solveth's behalf. <laughs> sitting around here tonight, you know, watching Sylvester and why I've come up here to speak to you with this crash helmet on. Well, the fact is this. Before we started out on our tour, we tried to get insured, or Sylvester insured, for the stunts he does, which are rather dangerous, as you will probably find. And, anyway, no insurance company would accept him. No one, no, but no, ins not one insurance company would accept him. So we decided to form our own insurance company. It's called the Ken Campbell, Sylvester McCoy, John McCartney, John Scott Roadshow Fund. Sylvester McCoy. Now that is a mouthful. If you can repeat it, you don't have to put nothing in the bag. Thank you very much. The bag is now coming round amongst you, and I hope you'll be very generous. And no foreign coins, please. Thank you. Ah, oh, it's gone. Oh, there it is. Oh, his dad back somewhere. Oh, I see there's a boss and girl from the corner come looking at me. Oh! <laughs> In each life, a little rain must fall. And that's our drink for tonight. <laughs> 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 Have you all ready, ready, please? Get on the shot. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the highlight of the evening's entertainment. Is it going to farm? So this. Farm? 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 Is it going to farm? No. Is it going to have a couple of x-ray for a minute? Oh, Right then. Should have had a farm, I know what you're talking about. No. Are you ready, Sylvester? Yes. You loosen your belt, please. Oh dear. Now you do realise that the clock won't start ticking until the ferret is completely down your trousers. Yes. <laughs> it says teeth. It has got teeth. It wouldn't be dressed as cool as that. <coughs> <laughs> All right, you've got the tile caught. Start the clock. It's going to be quiet. Um, I, think, <laughs> okay, um, I think I'd like to see it out, please. Stop the clock. So, Vest McCoy didn't beat the world record here tonight, but he actually achieved a time of 48 seconds, which is only two seconds off the world record. What about the ferret? 
Mm. What about the ferret? Sir? <laughs> ferret is perfectly all right. You can examine it afterwards if you'd like to. You know. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand, please, for Thomas. Thank you.
to pick up the food and put it back in his plate. Oh, it's that's hygienic. excellent. Really marvellous. Carry on, Sylvester. Yeah, can I can ask you. Eclipse is it. Oh, Sylvester, one See. moment. See. Well, what's this black cord around your neck? What is a black cord? Yeah. Ah, it is for hygienic reasons. The hygienic reasons? See, see. It is, um, it is attached to my, uh, how you call it, uh, my, uh, my John Tommy. <laughs> see? You've got a black cord attached to your John Tom. See? For hygienic reasons. You see, when I go to... Uh, Shut your mouth. When I go to, um, <laughs> as a speaker, huh? when I go to, um, you, how do you say, reliever myself, it's a no good if I take it out with my fingers. It's unhygienic. No, see? No, no. Ah, so, 
I take it out as the black card. It's a team. Oh, it's Marvin. It's excellent. Right on, mate. Carry on then, see. Si. Uh, yes, Sylvester, si. you say you uh, uh, you pull it out with the black cord. See. Si. How do you put it back? Oh, it's a knife and a fork. One moment. Bella, bella. A grip to set. Ah, it's a bella, bella. See, on a moment, the poor poor get a light. Now we have a lovely crib to set here, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Special chair. There we go. Ah, it's a bella, eh? Eh, molto bella. Oh, there we go. The crib to set, all about. Oh, 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 And I lay me down to sleep And when I woke up the was shack was round my feet Well, it's been so worried man To see the worried song Oh Lord, it's been so worried man To see the worried song It's been so worried man To see the worried song I'm worried now I won't be worried now Hard to get it now. Well, it's a good man to sing a worried song. Oh, Lord, it's a good man to sing a worried song. It's a good man to sing a worried song. I put it down, oh, but I won't be worried now. Well, it's a good man to sing a worried song.
My desk clerk off inferior right. But Sylvester's pulse begins to race as the club takes near a five. Then he's on the bus and in his bed sit, and then he becomes alive. He opens up his wardrobe door and his heart fills with delight as he sorts through all his costumes to see who he'll be tonight. Oh, Captain Sylvester, put on your cowboy boots With a six-gun in his holster, he takes no dirty loops Put on your spurs, strap on your guns, get up in all you have And we'll tug up in our Nazi stuff and meet you down the line Hi, Captain. Come here, boy. Me? Yes, boy. I'm talking to you, boy. <laughs> okay, boy, put that away. Put that away. Well done, boy. Well done. Hey, well, some women around this place. <laughs> Come on, darling, let's get it. Fancy your hand of poker, Captain. Sure thing, kid. Sure thing. Sure thing. What about you, Tom? Uh, oh, I guess you can leave me out, I guess. Sit down, Tom. Yeah, I could just fancy a quick hand. Yep, I wouldn't mind a quick hand, too. Yeah. After the game. <laughs> oh, yeah! It's <laughs> 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 a new thing I could practice. Three fours and nines are peelers. Three fours and nines are peelers. Three fours and nines are peelers. Where are you from, kid? Oh, Hank Porty, Wyoming. Captain Sylvester McCoy, Kansas City. Hi. Glad to know you, Mr. McCoy. Glad to meet you. Big damn McGrew, Tucson, Arizona. He's a good one.
of England, actually. Where are you from? Acton. Oh. Where are you from? <laughs> Tapno Park. Oh. Oh. message of our rhyme is those who laugh and mock at you are boring all the time.